We love an in-studio guest, the brilliant Carmen Metalli, joining us here to break down the NFC North. She's great. You'll love her. You know her because she's been on the show a million times. And the reigning heavyweight champ of sports media is here, Pat McAfee. I had the voice to be the reigning heavyweight champ. I don't have that in me, but lots to talk about today. Ursay fires back. My mic pack just fell on the floor. Kraft and Jones had a bit of a spat. They got over it. D-Hop, DeAndre Hopkins is back just in time for Thursday Night Football. Um, I might have talked to him. You might have said he's feeling good for that one ahead of the game against the Saints. Deshaun Jackson goes to the Ravens. Ipso facto, Aaron Rodgers is jealous. We've got it all today, and this mug appeared at my table. Why would I have an all of a sudden FanDuel branded mug? Because we have a big guest on the show. I really think that that's why. They're like, oh, McAfee's on. Get the FanDuel mug on the set today, which is great. And here he is, our first guest, a two-time pro bowler, all-pro punter during his eight seasons for the Indianapolis Colts. Now he is a media mogul. It's true. You can see and hear him ringside for the WWE. You can see him parting his face off as part of ESPN's College Game Day every Saturday, all while ruling the sports world from the Thunderdome in Indiana from the Pat McAfee show making his FanDuel TV debut Pat McAfee hey Kay I thought your introduction was fantastic early you said you weren't going to be able to do it you sounded amazing and I think it's because that coffee is extra crisp this morning in that FanDuel mug we don't have any of those over here at the FanDuel Thunderdome but hopefully one day thank you for having me Kay this is an up and Adams <laughs> debut I am pumped about this thank you so much thank you for making the time I don't know how you do it I'll try not to take a ton of it congrats on everything especially the Thunderdome how's it coming along you've been very honest about the experience yeah the Thunderdome in theory uh, was brilliant. You know, and Thunderdome, in theory, was a beautiful idea, a great concept. We got a much better setup. We got a much bigger setup. But technology-wise, has been a nightmare. For some reason, if you just plug wires into wires, they don't work. But other than that, we're enjoying the hell out of the NFL season, enjoying the college football season, and uh, lucky to do this every single day. And we're lucky that you are back into the daily sports media world. We appreciate the hell out of you, Kay, for Thanks, sure. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Okay, no should we, uh, I know you got a big show ahead, and I'm sure you'll be talking about this. Do you want to start with Ursa and Snyder, or should we have some appetizers and light nosh first? Well, I'm not a big appetizer guy. Give me the Good. meat, you know what I mean? I'll dive right in there. I'm doing the keto as well. <laughs> I think the Ursa stuff was fantastic, Kay. What are your thoughts? I mean, oh, no, 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 no. This is an interview. No, no, no. You're on my show, and I, was, I know that you hate that. Uh, my thoughts are that it's a mess. Fall owners meeting, Dan Snyder under fire for a billion, bajillion things, and Ursay comes out hot. He's the first NFL owner to publicly condemn or at least fire back at Dan Snyder. I think it was badass, and I think the floodgates are open now. It's going down. How do you feel about what Ursay had to say? I think to your point, Kay, normally we don't hear this type of stuff from NFL owners. Honestly, NFL owners are normally a tight-knit group. We heard this last year uh, when Mark Davis came out of the owners' meetings, and obviously John Gruden was the only emails that we've seen, like 10 emails. They're bad emails out of like 400,000 or 600,000. And Mark Davis at the owner meetings was asked, uh, do you think they should – expose all the other emails. And Mark yeah. Davis goes, yeah, they should. And then he walks away and he goes, I gotta go to dinner, guys. And he had a starter jacket on, a backpack on, and I believe a flat bill at the time. And that was really the first time we had heard an owner kind of turn on the rest of the owners because the rest of the owners were saying, hey, listen, we need to keep this tight. We need to be on the same page. That's why their business has been so damn good for so long is because they're always on the same page. So when Jim Ursay goes into these owner meetings and cuts a promo on Dan Snyder saying, there's merit to kick this guy the hell out of here even though it was not on the agenda for conversation or for a vote, I think it's a beautiful thing. Now, is Jim Irsay the guy that we all thought would be that? I don't know if nationally people thought it'd be Jim Irsay. I think in Indy, though, we love this dude. This dude is a rock star. He has lived 45 lives in his 62 years of existence. He was a general manager at the age of 31. I think he became an owner in the 40s. Mm. He's friends with he's friends with McCartney and everybody that you could even fathom. He's been there, done that with everything, and you know, I think him opening up and starting the conversation publicly is something that wasn't going to be received well privately. Uh, but I think it's a good thing. And now, does Dan Snyder take the five billion dollars to sell that team Oof. if he's forced to do so? Or will he continue to linger around and continue to do what Dan Snyder does? And that's just be a cockroach and survive. I have no idea, but it's electrifying what Jim Irsay did yesterday. Kay. Agree. And I'm an Irsay gal. I was in Indianapolis. I didn't get to come to the Thunderdome. I wanted to come hang out and say hi. But, uh, you know, I was there on behalf of Jim Irsay, Jim Irsay's family and Kaylin and everything. 
everybody. And and I, I don't know him super well. No owner is perfect. What he did yesterday was badass. What he's done in his career is badass. And he was so warm. And things that, that are, he, he's such a passionate guy, not only about the NFL, but he's not afraid to say it. And he went out there and did his thing. And now it's impossible for other owners to not follow. And they need 24, by the way, everyone watching. Just so it's 24 votes to make it happen. The ousting of all ousting. Uh, and, you know, I just, I, we need the commission on your show because we had, you know, we had Kraft and we had uh, Jonesy yelling at each other at some meeting. What is it going to take to get the commissioner on the Pat McAfee show? And what would your first question be? The only way we get the commissioner on the show is if we have Kay Adams on our show. I think that is really the only way that that could happen because you are obviously the media darling of everybody in the NFL. That is why we're all pumped that Up and Adams is back. You're so good at your job. I don't know if the commissioner will ever come on. I got a DM from Troy Vincent Sr. Okay. Junior. Troy Vincent Sr., the former player that's now like second or third in command over he there. Is. He I'm, I get a, yeah. is. Yeah. Is it Senior it's K a good or question. Junior? I'll it, look it up. But I, but I know who you're talking about. Of course, he's in charge of uh, lots of decisions. He's very, clo very close to the commissioner. Uh, Does he have a son named Troy Vincent or is his dad <laughs> I think it's Troy just Troy Vincent. I never knew that there was a uh, senior associated to it. Yeah, it might be senior. I, I'm not harm saying. Is it Troy Vincent senior or whatever the case? I don't know. You think, I, what do you, like think I have like a, you think I have like a newsroom of crack staff looking stuff up for me? Are you joking? Like, it is well, senior. Well, I had four people in my ear before I came live. I'm happy they're doing this thing right. I don't know about this banner that is across the bottom of the screen. I think that is a little bit of a, mm, I okay. have questions on that. Okay. But everything else, fantastic that you got going on. So Troy Vincent senior or junior, senior, whatever the case, we apologize. Okay, Troy Vincent Sr. All right, perfect. We figured that out. Troy Vincent Sr. sent me a DM, and he thanked me for what I do for the NFL and all this stuff. Hmm. So I was like, oh, so people in the offices are listening. So Roger Goodell might have heard my show in the past. If Roger was to come on, there's so many questions. I mean, not only about the growth and the evolution of what the NFL is and what it's going to become, maybe the European international division that's coming, but also with, you know, if you expand this thing, getting more money into the league, new ownership. I mean, it's just, that is a three-hour, four-hour conversation I could have that hopefully one day I'll be able to do with old Raj. And I'll bring him peanut M&Ms and make sure he yes. has that leather couch that he likes to sit on during watching NFL football in his basement. I mean, we'll make him feel as comfortable as possible, just like you have done here on Up and Adams. Kate. I think, stop, stop saying stuff like that. You make me so uncomfortable and you know it. Uh, I think uh, I, could, I think I would put all the money at NFL Sportsbook that, Matt, that the commissioner watches your show often almost regularly i can almost guarantee it uh let's talk about aaron Rodgers, who oh, joins you to hate it no i don't think so it. no 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 i really don't think so you're so good what do you mean you're so good for the game what are you talking about yeah but there's sometimes we gotta call it how we see it like for instance these right. officials thinking you know like th these types of things but i feel like we are trying to grow the league trying to grow the game and more importantly we're just trying to enjoy it every single day and i think that's why the show you came from good morning football and what you're doing now with this show and our show like I like to celebrate sport. I like to enjoy competition. I like to enjoy watching the greats be great. That is why our show has the vibe that it has, because yeah. we just want to enjoy the NFL. We want to do our thing. And ultimately, we want to take every single dollar from FanDuel and every single bet that we place. <laughs> well, we love it. We'll get to that. Aaron Rodgers, he was there with you yesterday, not physically in the Thunderdome. I'm sure he'll stop by sometime. But uh, he was there. We all watch it. We all listen. It's appointment viewing. What changes have you seen from Aaron last year to this year? Like, how has he evolved in your eyes? I don't know. It's an interesting question because I got to hang out with him for like the first time for, um, you know, a few days out of Tahoe for the American Century Championship Golf Tournament. We were staying in the same house. Nice. Uh, hey. <laughs> It was his house. He rented it. We got to stay in there. It had different wings. There was a spa in there. I mean, it was beautiful. But getting to learn about him as a human off the field, out of our interviews, out of our conversations was interesting because I do believe he's just like a hippie musician who just so happened to be the best football thrower in the history of anything. I think he could have succeeded in any avenue that he wanted to. I think his brain is massive. We've all seen that on display on a regular basis. And he just so happens to be the most talented NFL quarterback of all time. I think coming into the season, without Devonte, he knew there was going to be some growing pains they knew they were going to have a little bit of struggles there's three and three right now and the way he said it yesterday is like all the teams going into the season in the nfc that were supposed to go to the super bowl are all three and three as well so i think you know growth i think i've seen him off the field grow a lot over the last three years just 
from outside looking in. Yeah. Uh, but on the field, I think he's just trying to figure it out with the guys that he has, this team that he has, and I think he and LaFleur will do so. I mean, all research and study has told us that they're going to be able to figure it out. I assume they will be, but it's certainly not the glitz and the glamour and the fun times that it was last year at this time for the Green Bay Packers. If he's a hippie musician and, you know, he's into all that stuff, should we, you and I, we have power. Should we manifest a receiver to him? He was talking about it on the Pat McAfee show yesterday. Should we, like, do some woosah? Like, what, which receiver do we want? If you could pick any receiver, oh, boy, to go out there. To, good, well, that was fun. <laughs> I've gone no, too no, far. I didn't leave. I didn't leave. <laughs> oh, we what is to- that? This thing is, uh, it's prayer chain, I believe, or something. I don't know. Aaron had it on. It's a Native American prayer necklace. It's supposed to have really good vibes. This is what Aaron was wearing that day. He looked like a super hippie on his travels to the game. So if we're going to do some manifesting, I think we got to actually properly do it with whatever the hell this thing is that I got off Amazon for four bucks. And my FanDuel mug. Yeah, the FanDuel mug always brings good vibes. I'm going to say I want Odell. I still want Odell. Odell, healthy, great, good, good football fit. That's what I want. Well, you know, Deshaun Jackson goes to Baltimore, Jackson to Jackson. The I Am Athlete podcast had him on live, I believe, in Philly. And he said, hell yeah, I'll come back. I'll go to Baltimore. I'll go to Kansas City. I'll go to any of those other places. So go ahead and get that speed off the board. Uh, Whenever it talks about Odell Beckham Jr., if you look what the Kansas City Chiefs just did yesterday, Kay, whenever they restructure Travis Kelsey's contract into a signing bonus and open up $3.455 million in cap space, you would assume that that's maybe to bring in Odell Beckham Jr. The trade deadline's next week. I hope they get Odell Beckham Jr. I hope they get a weapon for Aaron to continue to use because although Dobbs has come into his own and Tunyon's his own, you know, animal on the football field and Big Dog is great and Randall Cobb is going to be out for a couple weeks because he's hurt and Aaron Jones is a guy that they can't get the ball to but they love. Another weapon is always good for a Super Bowl run. So I will woo saw and manifest alongside you with my little prayer beads. Ow. But I think if if somebody doesn't believe enough, yeah. which would be maybe the GM who doesn't offer enough money, I don't know if manifesting is enough, you know, because Odo Beckham Jr. was offered $600,000 by the Green Bay Packers last year. Then he was offered $4 million from the Los Angeles Rams. He goes on to win a Super Bowl. So it's a wild time in the NFL. And for the Packers, hopefully they'll be able to pull the trigger and put some money on the table for somebody to make their team better. It's so true. It's been a wild time. And we've also seen something I know that you love, special teams getting love, right? We were seeing kickers getting primetime post game Justin Tucker uh, the other week and then we of course the Dustin Hopkins that thing was crazy tough it was one of the toughest things I feel like I've seen and I ever ever. yeah a la Darius Butler went into the film room and I did my homework on you Pat McAfee and you pretty much did it all Uh, fake punt run fake punt pass you had a punt downed at the one you've recovered your own onside kick my favorite thing though is this it just truly truly is and it's famous and everybody sees it I don't think it quite gets enough (laughs) enough love the laying out of one trend in holiday back in 23 you're a madman well, okay, this was supposed to be a touchback because he was having a Pro Bowl year. That guy's an Olympic sprinter in Trinidad Holiday, and I just closed my eyes, ran as fast as I could, and boom, right on the sideline, right in front of Eric <laughs> Decker. Uh, I believe Peyton Manning's big head's looking on John Fox. There was a guy that was supposed to block me. I forget his name right now. He's a good dude. He was. We were going to be like friends with each other. There's David Thornton pumping me up a little bit. Somebody hit me in the head, too. Might have had a concussion. Who knows? I mean, I don't wear a mouthpiece. That doesn't matter, I guess, in the whole concussion conversation. But, yeah, that's one of the luckiest, most athletic moments moments of my entire yeah. life and really I was just running with my eyes closed okay you know and I'm 230 <laughs> right now probably 240 he's like 170 180 yeah. pounds so I should win that battle but he was an Olympic sprinter so the fact that I got the angle is incredible lucky and uh you know a blind squirrel will find a nut every once in a while and then when you get that nut you got to chew on it's it, amazing you, know I mean? you got really you got to <laughs> you got to chew, chew on that nut you certainly do I can't believe I yeah, just said that on TV. Squirrel, yeah, you always get me somehow squirrel. one way or the other uh well the way I was yeah, yeah. I was watching this last night and I thought to myself like receivers dream of the game-winning touchdown and safeties they go to bed and they're like oh like they, they manifest and we saw that fourth quarter pick six so the night before the game as a punter what is the dream scenario like was that the all-time dream moment for a punter no no like i think i think the dream scenario is not having to punt at all like that is the dream scenario is not having to punt at all because then we're winning games and i'll tell you every punter that i've ever met 
loves having a good time. You know, love a couple beers, love the team winning, love celebrating. So the fact that we got to go out every once in a while and bail an offense out who's not able to get a first down, we understand it's our job, but it's not what we're looking forward to. I'd rather have zero punts, all kickoffs, all holds, and then move on to the next game as a dub with a dub and celebrate the hell out of it. But you're trying to pin a team on a one. I mean, that's the, the, you're, you're trying to play full court defense. That's all you're trying to do as a punter. You are a field <laughs> position controller. Uh, so anytime you pin another team deep and they got to go the long way, percentages say they're probably not going to score. You're probably going to get paid. And your defensive coordinator and your defensive teammates are going to love you for it. So that is what, uh, if we're called into action, we're trying to do. And every once in a while, you get a tackle and get to showcase that you're not that – you know, soft, you're a little bit more athletic than people think. That's a win as well, Kay. Uh, I love it. We lo all loved it. Your tweets, guys, at Up and Adam Show. I have one more question for you, but I did want to get to this because I, I had a million for you. I know you have to go get ready for your show. You are stretched so thin. Uh, you're doing college game day at ESPN, the whole thing, a dream, and you're so so incredible at it, and you're backflipping into the water, and you're you know flying from place to place, WWE. But you do somehow, somehow, I don't know how, you make time to give back. And I do think... And it's not, I'm not kissing your ass. Like, it's a very, it's very cool what you do. And I don't think it gets talked about enough. And it's, it reminds you kind of of Gronk. He's a character. It's all like, you know, for you, it's, you know, t black tank tops and pat foolery. But what you do for WVU Children's Hospital, millions and millions, your alma mater, Plum High School in Pennsylvania, we looked up organizations supporting victims of domestic violence. Let me just say that it is really inspiring that, yes, you're making a lot of money, you're on top of the world, but you are giving back. And I think that that's really special and it doesn't get highlighted. So now hopefully everybody pays a little closer attention to that. Very cool. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate the acknowledgement. Um, you know, yeah, I'm incredibly lucky. I'm grossly overpaid to do what I do. I think I understand that. I've been grossly overpaid to do what I do since I came out of high school or came out of college at 21. Uh, whenever you get paid millions of dollars to kick a football and then whenever you get to talk about sports with your friend and they pay you what you pay, uh, the only right thing to do is to kind of take care of the people that have gotten you to where you are. So all the things that I donated to were all you know, programs and foundations I've been a part of in the past that I wanted to say thank you to and give back to and hopefully, you know, make the world a little bit better for somebody. I'm lucky to do it, Kay. I'm thankful you brought it up. I will hopefully continue to do so until I'm broke, which is definitely going to mm. happen again at some point. And, um, yeah, let's just try to make the world a little happier, a little better, and that's literally the goal of why I retired when I did. So, Kay, I appreciate the hell out of that. Well, it's really important because, you know, when I was talking to Amy Howe, who you know and Mike Rappensberger, and coming over to FanDuel, like, this logo is number one right now. They're number one. They're leading the way you are in your respective industry as well. And when you're on top, I do think you should pay it forward. And we that's why we, we traveled the show to Indianapolis. And we we're looking for players and teams and everything that we we're trying to catch people doing good. And I just thought it was really cool that you did that. Last one for you, very quick. Last time I saw you, you made fun of me for how I approached gorillas in the Rwandan jungle. And you said uh, that uh, if you saw, uh, uh, woo, 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 woo. If you saw uh, a gorilla, that you'd walk up and shake his hand. Now, I know you're obsessed with UFOs and aliens and all of that stuff. So you're going to Eugene, Oregon, say on your travels, you somehow come into contact with an actual alien, which you might be based off your time management skills alone. How are you approaching an alien? I think I'm just saying what's up. You know, like, honestly, I believe, and I've thought about this. This is something that I've, I haven't put the prayer chains on and manifested about, although I should think about it. And Aaron and I, you know, maybe got to dive deeper into some plants in the middle of the jungle to find out if this is uh, possible or real or not, because it sounds like whenever you travel interdimensionally, which is what that plant did that he does, it's a real wild time. I think we should try to shake their Hans. You know, I think we should go shake their haunts. I honestly believe that. I don't think the right thing to do is just walk up and smack them in the mouth. I don't think the right move is to go ahead and fire a missile at them. I think we should go try to shake whatever what they, they don't got. Have is hands? it a hand? Well, yeah, that if it's an appendage, I, I think we high five. I just think I would love to have a good conversation with an alien. I, I think that is something I would enjoy doing. I appreciate you, you know, saying maybe I'm an alien. Like that's, that's I'm on to you. I'm just compliment. saying. That's a pretty big compliment, you know, because Elon Musk definitely won. Uh, there's <laughs> numerous others that I believe are aliens. But yeah, I would like to just chat with them, okay? I'd like to have a conversation because I think everybody has a story, and I couldn't fathom what an outer galactic or intergalactic one would be like from an alien. And I think our we're getting close, okay? I think we're getting real close to meeting these aliens, and I am 
here for it. I think that's why you built the Thunderdome. It's not a studio. It is, in fact, a, a defense place that you, you know, it's a place that everyone can go locked in. I'm on to you, Pat McAfee, and I'm also on to you wearing tank. I thought you got rid of the tank tops. You grew out of the tank tops. Wow. Now you have them. So I'm, I'm a little wow. confused, but uh, we love hey. you here on the show. So thank you for stopping oh, wow. by. I love your show. I appreciate you for having me. I was going to move on from the tank tops. I was going to move forward yeah. with sleeves and dress in a little bit nicer. I don't. I only had, I only had two shirts that had sleeves at the house. That How I many moved tank into. tops? Had, it's like sixty to sixty-five. <laughs> I haven't kept track, but it's literally just my uh, my closet is like a hilarious, just like tank top, tank top, tank top, tank top, tank top, back to back to back to back to back. So whenever I wanted to move on from the tank top, because it was getting a little chilly, I'm becoming an adult. You know, yeah. these types of things are happening. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start wearing shirts. Only had two of them with sleeves, and it was a problem for game day. I only have like two shirts with sleeves on them, so I had to start like buying on Amazon. So literally, as the shipments of dress stuff is coming in, you're seeing it live on. Game day. That's I'm my life. Little, I'm 35. I'm a little disappointed you're wearing suits and stuff on that college game day show. There, I have to have respect for it. Kay, Kay, I got to have respect for that table, that desk. I have to. You're I appreciate respectful. Where you're what, are you not, from. what are you saying about my show that you come on wearing a tank top then? I don't know if the standard has been set that everybody for 30 <laughs> years is going to dress up. And now, granted, 30 years from now, I come on up in Adams and we're all wearing turtlenecks and we're drinking out of coffee mugs. I would do the same thing to show respect. But it is morning television. You know, I feel like yeah. you know something about it. I would Those die. People. I would die to be in those production meetings. Like I'm watching you flip into the water. I'm like, is that something that he just did? Or did you have to like, what's the negotiation of what Pat McAfee wants to do on a storied show like that? That has so many elements versus what he can do. It's, well, so that's fun. The it's so funny. They thought, they were like, uh, hey, you want to go down to the Vol Navy? We'd like to showcase that. And I started putting myself in my position. <laughs> I'm like, if you put me on a boat, like, there's a very good chance I'm going to end up in that water if it's a boring, if this is not going well, I'm going to end up in that water. <laughs> and they told me that water's dirty. I had my mouth open when I jumped in there. You know, got to live and learn. Who knows what I got from it, but I've been having a blast on Saturday <laughs> oh, mornings, Kay. It's amazing. We love watching you. I know. Go do your show. You're amazing. We'll be tuning into the Pat McAfee Show, of course, as we always do. Thank you for stopping by. Don't watch my show. The show stinks. I don't have to prepare that much. Cheers to you, though, Kay. You are crushing it. Thankful you're in the FanDuel family. Cheers. See you soon. Cheers to you. All right, we've got more to come. He's just the greatest. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Um, Bundy is saying Russell Wilson appears to have a to be a, have been a system quarterback in Seattle. This is an underreaction to the week that was. Denver appears to have threatened their immediate future with a signing. So what do we do? Just blow up the Broncos? What are we doing? Poor Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. Some things we're underreacting to. Pat McAfee having his mouth open when he jumped in that water. And this, take a look at the Giants. No one in the NFL is having more fun than this team. And it matters. This is, of course, the Victor Cruz sack. And he did a good job. I'll have to ask old Victor about this. Uh, then you had Dable and Wink post game. They were super excited. Look at them. Super excited. They're having more fun than anybody. The coaches are in on it. And we're also seeing raw motion, too. Take a look. And why does it matter? Because I do, in fact, think in 2022, the Belichickian, hard nose, no days off, all business approach is a bit of an anomaly, and it does not work for most teams. If you look at recent history, the teams that surprise and they go on runs are usually the ones that are embracing camaraderie and embracing fun in the process. Think about that 2017 Saints team. They milked every defensive celebration. They run, they're taking pictures, the whole thing. 2019, Niners, Kittle, his antics, the T-shirt on T-shirt step. Remember the Eagles? Eagles with their dog masks. We're looking at the Eagles now with their Batman capes and all of that going on. The Bengals, Burrow, the press conference, the quotes, the you know the wardrobe. When you look really at the way this league is going, and you remove the old men and women yelling at a cloud about what's going on, this is an element. Fun is an element necessary for success in this NFL. And so that's one of my underreactions for this week. Let's keep them coming here because everyone loves to overreact, but let's get to, into some of it and let's get into um, the Tennessee Titans, shall we? Okay, yeah, let's do it. They're coming off a bye, so literally no one is talking about them, but they, you know... Reigning number one seed in the AFC wins 
three straight. Derrick Henry looks like he's starting to cook again, averaging 140 total yards per game, four touchdowns over the course of this win streak. And even in this bye week, they've generated plenty of headlines. Look at, but it's headlines, but not really, right? No one's talking about this. I'm going to go ahead and say this is one of my favorite players of all time, Delaney Walker, deciding to officially retire as a Titan. And it's very fitting because the three-time Pro Bowler sort of perfectly embodies what this team is. Understated, he was always out there and performed. He was tough as nails. And he meant the world to the city of Nashville. He went through immense tragedy that was very much connected to what was going on with his team, uh, or at least bonded with, in memory with what's going on with his team. And then he has stood for, um, you know, no drunk driving. He has stood for things. And he did everything the right way. I've always been a huge fan of Delaney Walker, one of the first jerseys I ever purchased. So congrats on his retirement to this perennially and weekly and daily underreacted to team. And they're getting a new stadium. That's another big headline. Uh, they've got funding for $2.2 billion dome that was approved. So we may see, you know, you know what this means, Super Bowl Nashville, which I'd be so here for in the future. All right. The second thing that I think everyone's underreacting to is George Kittle and his comments. Oh, he's so fun and he's great and he should be in the WWE. Well, over the past two days, when, you know, he kept it real. And when we're talking about the Niners, even on the show, we had analyst Mark Schlereth on Monday and uh, we talked about the San Francisco injuries were a big part of that story. Take a look. I know they're as deep as anybody in the National Football League, but when you lose six players and you lose guys, um, you know, the likes of starting corner Emmanuel Mosley, Nick Bosa, uh, Eric Armstead, Javon Kinlaw, and that takes its toll. So we're talking injuries. Darius Butler also alluded to, well, it's injuries. And when you think about the Niners and, and how talented they are and anything that could get in the way of their success, it's always the injuries. Kittle, though, had a different take. I mean, you could use that as an excuse, but I mean, we're the San Francisco 49ers. We have a standard that we play at. I mean, we play at a very high level, a lot of energy, 100% effort on every single play. And, um, you know, I haven't watched the tape yet, but I don't know if we gave that today, you know, at every single position. Very unkittle in a great way. I like it. Being injured is an excuse everyone makes for this team, for every team. He's not letting that be the story or set into the locker room. And yes, the injuries are vast. You can totally make that case. It's bad. Eric Armstead and Bosa and Trent Williams would be the best guy out there, especially, you know, Mark Schlereth said anybody would say it. But then, I don't know, let's, let's jump off this full screen because you just got to look at what the Giants are doing. And I can point to many teams, but, you know, the Giants fans and the Giants can be sitting here making every conceivable injury excuse, but instead they have changed their plan of attack and they have found a way to get it done. So, listen, it is Game of Thrones in the NFC West. Everyone's running around without appendages. Children are crying. It's ugly. But the throne is there for the taking. Everyone is still alive in the thing. And I think it comes down to who figures it out first. Is it the Niners? Do they figure out a way to attack with their injuries? Do they, you know, Kittle questioning their effort? We're not talking about this enough. 49ers Rams this weekend, uh, which has always been a fun one-sided joust. So we'll see how it shakes out. All right. I want your underreactions at Up and Adam Show. Carmen Vitale is coming up. But the third thing that we are underreacting to is, oh, are we not doing Trubisky? No, I'm confused because I'm confused. Anybody want to speak to me? Are we so we're not do we're not doing Trubisky then? No one's listening in the control room. No one's listening in the control room. No, we don't want to do Trubisky now because okay, are we doing it? I guess we are. Uh, poor Trubisky, let's just re be real here. He's gotten the shaft on our show. We wanted to talk about him on Monday. It got pushed to Tuesday. We wanted to talk about him on Tuesday. It got pushed to Wednesday. I want to talk about him today. And then we start going to the break instead of talking about him. But we're going to give him a love because he was nearly perfect after Kenny Pickett went out with that concussion. We are underreacting to his potential second story to his second act to his second rewrite because we, we've been keep wanting to, it to happen we don't know if it will but he was awesome game changing touchdown toss to chase claypool game ending 10 play four minute 38 second drive that said see ya tom brady more drama about you you, you know brady's dealing with a, a, a whirlwind a, a tornado of drama at the hands of mitchell trubisky which is amazing um so he was sort of unceremoniously benched against the Jets. And now it was really awesome to see him sort of get his moment. He got to go scorched earth and he sends Brady packing the Steelers season saved now from the brink of oblivion, hopefully saved. And we don't really know how things are going to play out here. Tomlin uh, is very much being Mike Tomlin about this, but 
The truth is, Mitch gave the Steelers fans a moment they won't soon forget. A bright spot at the very least. So a big time decision for old Tomlin. And we will now go to break because we gave Mitchell Trubisky his love in the sloppiest segment we've had in the last 15 of 32 shows. But that's okay, we're still learning here. We had Pat McAfee, Carmen Vitale is in studio. I wanted to get up and greet her, but I can't because my mic pack is off, it's fine. We'll be back, we'll be back. God, Connor is yelling at me. I'm taking selfies, I'm doing social stuff. Look at this, what's going on here? Oh boy. What, what? <laughs> Carmen, help me out. <laughs> Go to the other camera, please, Sarushi, because Carmen Vitale oh is here. She there not only there covers the NFC North for Fox Sports and, uh, you know, won a Super Bowl. No big deal. No big deal. Won a Super Bowl ring during her time with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Did you not bring it? No, I didn't. I can't travel with that thing. Are you kidding? I, 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 it's, it's so, it's it's hey, huge. I wore a dress and, for you. And, yeah, you did. I'm so, oh my God. I, did, I, I Here I am, I'm coming up in kicks. And you, you're just the cutest thing in the entire world. You're adorable. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. You, you not only do that, but you are an audio tech. Because you just figure that <laughs> oh God, out for me. I've got things behind me. And now me we too. look perfect. And now we can begin. All right, you covered the NFC. How's it going for Fox? I mean, um, an exciting crazy division right now it is it's i don't think anybody had that in their bingo card before the season because everybody was so wrapped up in the afc west and all this other stuff and they were like oh it's going to be the packers division and now all of a sudden it quite it is the vikings division in fact which is a lot of fun um but it's Tell no it's a, it's a historical division it's the division you and i grew up in I know. um so it's kind of a dream come true to be able to talk about these teams for a living now i had some notes here because i wanted to make sure we did this sort of in order because you know aaron Rodgers gave us this sound bite everybody's trying to translate after his loss to the jets let's take a listen based on how we've played the last two weeks i think it's going to be in our best interest to simplify things uh, for everybody for the line, for the backs, for the receivers, um, especially with Cobby's injury, um, just simplify some things and and uh, maybe that'll help us get back on track. So I translated this yesterday and I said he's, be, he's, he's not calling his teammates slow, but he's saying, I mean, but, but when you say you're an oversimplified, we, we're oversimplified, it's, they're yeah. not grasping what he wants to do, but right. he hasn't really looked that great this season yet either. Yeah. He went on McAfee yesterday, who joined our show today, uh, just warming it up for Carmen Vitale. <laughs> and he said, you know, he gave some crazy, like, four-minute answer where he didn't really say anything, and they just joked about how him and Matt LaFleur aren't on the same page. What did you make of that? So, I mean, first of all, that's what Aaron does, which is fun, um, trying to decode all of these little things in the press conferences I sit in and all that other stuff. What I think he's saying here is, though, get me more players. Because, listen, the time for simplification was early in the season before anybody had tape on you. And th you build on that as you go. But now, you can't pull it back because the motion shifts. All that window dressing, what that does is that makes a defense confused. Uh -huh. And if you, and maybe then you can get guys to win their matchups that maybe shouldn't have won their matchups. By taking that away, you are telling, you need these guys to win outright. And quite frankly, Green Bay doesn't have those guys that can win outright. Right so we now. need Odell. So <laughs> I think what he's saying is I need more players, especially, you know, Randall Cobb is now out. You're getting Sammy Watkins. He's eligible to t return off of uh, IR. So maybe that'll help. But I mean. But Amari Rogers out there on offense, like, whoop, Samuel Jackson, hold on to your butt. So nobody wants to see that, especially not Aaron Rodgers, apparently. I don't think that Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs can't get there, but the okay. reality is they're just not there yet. Yeah. And so Aaron is like, while they get there, give me someone. Give me something. And, uh, if only someone had foreseen that they might need some veteran. Like oh, did everyone you, oh, did you thought, do that? But he did. Everyone did. So that's why it's, like, it's very annoying that we're sitting here in this dilemma in week seven. No? Uh, yeah, right. No, exactly. That's what I said. Like, you were supposed to build this and figure this out early in the season. Yeah. You and, have a bright future with these young guys. Right. Cute. I was there in person. Saw them against New England. Like, Chris, great. Christian and Dobbs, great. Yeah. Watson and Dobbs, rather. And But, but you know, you have to have somebody help him win now. Yes. I say throw the sink. Go. If I see one more wide receiver trade go it's on and day. it's not on a plane to Green Bay, Wisconsin, or Appleton, I'm not going to be happy about it. I'm not. Regardless. I mean, it's so out, outside of the, the Green Bay's. It's so outside of Green Bay's character, though. Yeah. Like they they will never. I feel like they they don't draft receivers. And I feel like they will never go out and get a big market receiver. But yeah. This, I mean, this this year is like a really top secret year for all these. Vikings years. fans, who are the most tortured fan base, yeah. according to me, are watching and saying, "Why are you even talking 
about the Packers. We're number one, because they are. We need to give them it's love. They're true. five and one, mm -hmm. right? Two game cushion. Oof, woof, woof, woof. Over <laughs> those Packers in the North that you cover for Fox Sports so well. Uh, what has impressed you about Kevin O'Connell? I mean, I'm not going to say that we told you that he would be the spark to get them going, but he has, in fact, been that spark. He has. And honestly, the biggest thing is not only the system, because this is a system that Kirk Cousins has been in for a while, that Sean, that, that Shanahan, Sean McVay system. Um, but what he's doing with it and the in-game adjustments he's been able to do. And okay. actually, I brought you a couple plays because... What? Yes. I brought you a couple plays because I wanted oh, to show wow. you what happened Let's go to the on tank. Sunday. All right, Tony. On Sunday. Okay, so the Dolphins did something really weird on Sunday where, I don't know if you know, the, fir the first down, there was not a first down to be had for Minnesota in the first quarter. Okay. Into the second. What they were doing, they were going with their base defense against Minnesota's 11 personnel. Minnesota lives in 11 personnel. Okay. So now you've got the base defense going, and this completely threw them off. This was basically Miami saying, we have dudes up front. We're going to beat you up front before you can let anything develop. And even if you get something to Justin Jefferson, we have Xavier Howard back there. So they did this, and it didn't work. And I'll show you. Oh. But, nah, 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 nah. So then Kevin O'Connell, usually defenses in the NFL play their, 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 their match defenses. They will match what the offensive personnel does and what, what personnel they have on the field. What Kevin O'Connell did in Sunday's game. Adjust, baby. He played match offense. Okay. And so he's like, all right, Miami's not getting out of their base formation. We're now going to go 21. We're going to add an extra back in the backfield. And he, th this is the second play where he does this. It pays dividends right away. The first play is a, is a completion to Adam Thielen for a first down. This one again. See. You see the base formation by Miami. Now you've got the full back in the backfield. Buy some time, boom. Justin Jefferson over the middle, another first down. This drive goes for a touchdown. Okay. Not only did he make the adjustment though, he kept with it, which is awesome. Like he decided that this is like, Miami wasn't gonna get out of this, so he was just gonna keep running it down their throat. He stuck with Dalvin Cook. Okay. And it paid off at the end of the game because fourth quarter, what happens? <laughs> Look at this, Show again, me. 21 personnel, Miami's in their base formation, and boom, we're gonna run the tape. There it is. So you've got a couple different blocks, yeah. but with the extra back, my, Dalvin Cook gets a hole, a very, what ends up being various, a very small hole has to beat one guy, and boom, 53 yards to the end zone. And that's three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, puts him up by two touchdowns. 53 yard touchdown. So yep. Kevin O'Connell, what would you, in one sentence, sort of the difference with him? Uh, just the flexibility and the adaptation that he can that he brings to this system, it just takes it to another level. And Vikings fans are loving it. Let us know at Up and Adam Show what you think now. Let's let's go to my. Do we have cocktails for this to talk about <laughs> Chicago, where you and I are both from? Uh, well, some old. Style, Should we get a malort? <laughs> yeah, so shots of malort so we can set our hair on fire. Um, how do you fix it? How do you fix it? I maintain uh, it's not. It wasn't Nagy. I, mean, I don't know if you disagree with me, but how do you fix it? I honestly think more of the blame does fall on Ryan Pace, though, because he did not set up this franchise for success at all. And now Ryan Poles is faced with a lot of work to do. So the sexy, it's not a sexy answer, but it's time. Mm -hmm. Like, they're going to need time, and they have so much coming up this offseason as far as draft capital goes, as far as cap space goes. Uh, but you can't, Rome wasn't built in a day. You can't revamp this entire, I mean, they had such a huge roster turnover at this point. And so they just simply don't have the guys right now. Yeah. And it's not, it's, uh, I thought all Bears fans understood. We were going into this season and you were going to start the building blocks. Why are Bears fans so, uh, like, uh, unhinged? I, <laughs> No, it's they're just true. so. They know it. Too, they're though. so. I know they do because they're so thirsty for a good team. I mean, this is such a good market. It's such a good football town. I live there. I love it. There's bears. I mean, yeah, it's never happened in our lifetime. No. But you, have to, but you also have to be have some self awareness of what's going. They got they got that win over the Niners, and it was like we you suck everybody who doesn't like us. We're going to win this. I Super honestly think that was the, the worst thing to happen to the Bears this season was that Week One win because Why? we went into this season thinking okay. They're not going to be good, but we're going to get building blocks. But then they won a game to come yeah. like home out right out the gate. And then now it's like, oh, maybe they can win games. Maybe they can win eight, nine games. No, yeah. that was not the deal this season. Speaking of unhinged, uh, we'll talk about Tom Brady after this with Carmen <laughs> Vitale. Uh, we're going to eat some cookies, too. Oh, my God, stop. No. <laughs> We'll be back right here at Up and Adam Show. Thank you for coming. Sorry for all that. <laughs> okay, welcome back to Up and Adam Show. Carmen Vitale of Fox Sports is here in LA, and people are probably wondering why there's a tray of cookies on the table. It is because the first time I ever <laughs> met the brilliant Carmen, I was in Tampa Bay for a game, I believe, against the Titans. No, the Texans. Texans it was the, the throwaway Texans. game at the end of the 
And I, I, I was, you know, like punch drunk or something, and I'm like shooting the cannon, and then mm -hmm. I met you, and she runs up to me, and, you know, of course, like I have a carry-on bag and whatever, I'm going back to New York, and she goes, can you please give these to Matthew Hamilton? And I'm like, she baked this man cookies. And I said, what is this? And then you expected me, the least responsible person mm -hmm. and the most careless person to mm -hmm. deliver hand-baked cookies for did him. Did you not, though? I, we we made I? you a cookie mule, is essentially yes. what we made. We made and, our and cookie that's mule. how our friendship began, <laughs> because I said, who likes Hamilton? I also made you cookies, though, and I made Kyle cookies. You did, you, but you're insane for that reason. I, I am. So what are I we am. So what are we trying here? Is These are Isabella's cookie companies. If you'd like one, have one. If you don't, you don't have to. But I'm absolutely going to try one of these bad boys, the, the vegan. Nope. That's not it for me. My girl. The Scotty, girl. why don't we? All right, we're going to play a game. It's called Trust Fall. And we're going to give you some scenarios. And you're going to have to, this is going to be hard. You're going to have to pick between uh, a couple of guys in this oh, one. Sorry, OK, so here we go. Both of these things cannot continue to struggle all season. I would like you to know. And I think we'll do, <laughs> this is just a bad idea. <laughs> Hold on. This is a half-baked <laughs> segment. Oh, yeah, my god. Yeah. This All is right. why you're a Tell pro. me this. This is the first one. Do we have them in the back here? What's going on? Okay. We'll just put them in there now. Let's do it. Uh, which guy do you trust more, trust fall wise, to lead their team into the playoffs? That man or that man, Rogers or Brady? I gotta go with Tom. Just 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 because of I know well, you know, I'm probably coming from a biased place being with the Buccaneers for six years. But at the same time, He's got so much talent around him. We just talked about how Aaron Rodgers wants more talent. Tom Brady could not want for more talent, you know, at, at all. Between Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, you have an underutilized run game at this point. Um, and then you've got a really great defense. That, that's a Todd Bowles defense. And so I just trust that they're going to figure it out. Something's wrong with him. It, it, he's, not, he's not himself. He's not the same. It doesn't sound like he's been the same. Um, but it's... Again, what's the, Tom, you know everybody around the team. Don't come on. What's what, what's the word? On, uh, what's the word on the Buccaneer Street? No, I mean, this, there, listen. There's a sense of urgency for him to win this year because of everything he has going on. You know, outside whatever it is, I don't know what it is, and it's not my story to tell either. But he, it's it's this is it. Like he came out of retirement. He's not even come out of retirement not to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. So I think that there's a frustration here that things aren't clicking as much as he'd want them to. And is the um, off-field stuff creeping in? <sighs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know, but I have to have faith that this, these, this coaching staff, the talent around him can pick him up if he's at all faltering, which I don't, th I mean, he's not. It's Tom Brady. They, he's they, add a good, they add a good receiver, I pick him. Mm. Oh, but are they gonna do it? There you go, there's my, I have no trust that Goody's gonna bring in a wide receiver, I tell you that. All right, can we criticize the cookies or is this like, is Isabella some like little five-year-old girl selling cookies on the side of the road? <laughs> All right, that was like a four out of ten. All right, both New York teams are hot, Carmen. I used to live there. Which head coach do you trust more to maintain their early season? Um, I don't know. Luck isn't the word. Success. Success. Yeah. No. Um, I mean, I think we're still both trying to figure out what or with both these teams are they for real? Yeah. And I don't. I don't know what simulation we're living in that both New York teams are good right now. Um, but I'm going to go with Brian Dable because of his offensive coordinator, who is Mike Kafka, Northwestern Wildcats own. Uh, so go Cats, because I just have faith in a Northwestern man. We, yeah, and I, Dable's amazing. All right, Jess, so we wish you good luck. Uh, you're an expert on, you, you consider yourself, you fancy yourself a trench queen. Mm. Which mm. O-line do you trust more in fourth and one? Bills, Eagles. Got to go with the Eagles, first of all. I think they're the best offensive line in football. But also because it's not just the offensive line in those situations. I don't know if you saw on Sunday against Dallas. But they had some offensive skill players just pushing Jalen Hurts into the end zone on fourth and one. Like, I don't know how it's legal, but I like it. <laughs> okay. So. We love it. So we're going to go with the Eagles who still, yeah, and I hope he's okay, Lane Johnson. He came on our show the day I after know. a win, but then he was, what's his, he's banged up, right? Yeah, yeah, I think he was being evaluated for a concussion. Uh, concu yeah. Okay, well, our yeah. Eagles expert screaming, concussion! Concussion! Oh I got to have some really good conversations with him at Online Masterminds this summer. He's, he's awesome. This one's better, whatever this one is. The team is better. <laughs> okay, the game's on the line. You get one last shot at the end zone from the eight yard line random. Who do you trust more to drop the right play? Sean McVay or Andy Reid? I mean, this season, don't I have to go with Andy Reid? He lost an offensive cheat code in Tyreek Hill, and you've got a top five offense still there. And I think they have one of the best red zone conversion percentages in the league at this point. I think they're second. So I have to go 
with my guy Andy. He's just been doing it for so long. What's too. wrong? With, what's wrong in this with this squad? I don't know. I really, line, right? yeah, I, I, honestly, I point to that all the time and I feel like a broken record because people are like, why is this offense clicking? I'm like, I literally, the first thing I look at is an offensive line. And if that's struggling, big wit. I think, think, means, do you think he'll come back? I don't know. I mean, I think once you make that decision. He was spotted decision, at the game. Okay, so, so people were saying like Sean Payton was at the Chargers game, right? Yeah. And he was spotted in them. In there's a difference between like, you go to the game low key and you sit in the suite and there's a difference between like, you're on the field with your family. and. Whitworth took his hold. They were walking around the field. They were doing a little. I'm like, mmm. And he does the wee thing with them when he comes on. We came on. Our I show. mean, like Lashawn McCoy still does the wee thing, and he is with with the Philadelphia Eagles, and he has shout the out to Shady. Shout out to Shady. Shady, we love he you. He deserves it. Absolutely. Um, He's the all time leading rusher all right, in that franchise. Last one. This is the most important one. We want to get in front of the stage at the Harry Styles concert. There are boas, there are children, there's all this, moms who are more in love with Harry Styles than their children. Uh, um, you need moms. somebody to clear the way for you, Vita Vea or Aaron Donald? I mean, I saw huh. Aaron Donald. <laughs> I saw Aaron Donald in those joint practices. Uh, but that being said, I got to go with my guy Vita because Vita is actually taller and bigger than Aaron is. So I feel like not only could he clear the way, but then I could like sit on his shoulders and then see the stage even better. He is so angry. He get he goes from zero to a million in anger <laughs> right away. It is really impressive. Seriously. It is right, right. Like as soon as he crosses over on the field, because then when he gets to the sideline or when he gets like off the field, yeah. he is like the goofiest. Like I, I we shotgun Gatorade cans like at him, training camp this year. Like he's just oh, absolutely goofy. Him and Jensen, I would just like. Oh, Oh, yeah. I, if I was at training, I would just like, I don't want to They've had some battles, but they, I mean, they love each other. Carmen Vitale, I think, is going to save for our last segment because we have to take a break here on the Up and Adams show. I ate about three different cookies, <laughs> and we'll be back. Thanks for coming in. Uh, queen, cookie maker, and um, we have to bring in Matt Hamilton now. Matt Hamilton, our new family member. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Matt. <laughs> hey, Carmen. I just want to take my time on the show today to apologize. Not only did it take me three years to pay you back for the cookies, but apparently the ones that we give you are only a four out of ten. So um, that's you, on yeah, me. You were promising me cookies from some, like, New York bakery back in the day. Wow. We'll, we'll get them to what you. We'll get them to you. What is this cookie? What is? What happens here? What is going on? <laughs> Hey, do you agree I mean, with the, be, quickly? Do you agree with the the, uh, the Vikings? Do you agree with the O'Connell adjustments being like the main thing? Yeah, and I think that's something we didn't see from that offense last season was Mike Zimmer making those adjustments as games went on, and Kevin O'Connell just has brought a new juice to this offense and is with his ability to adjust. Are the cookies responsible for making him look like he's twelve years old still? I mean, are they like eternal youth cookies? Like, why? Like, are cookies? they the J-Lo vampire cookie? Because, Hamilton, you literally look like you're 15 years old. <laughs> he's got a beard. <laughs> Carmen Batali might come back beard, tomorrow yeah. because she's here all week and she made the mistake of telling me goodbye, everybody. Enjoy your day. And thanks, Pat McAfee. <laughs>